Good evening from wherever you're watching this. My name is Professor Tim Campbell. I'm a visiting professor of international management at the University of Northampton, and I look after the Doctor of Business Administration uh, program for the uh, for the United the UAE intake, United Arab Emirates intake. So it is a pleasure to be with you tonight and to take you through the DBA program. So what I want to do is just spend about 15 to 20 minutes to go through a presentation just to give you some key uh, some key ideas and some key points about the DBA program. And then once that's done, there'll be a chance for you to ask any questions that you might have. Okay, so let's get going then. So before I talk about the DBA program, let me just tell you about the university and where the university is located. So the University of Northampton is indeed located in a town called Northampton in England. And on my slide here, I've, uh, I've put a, a big arrow which points to Northampton. It's about an hour by train north of London, about 100 miles, that, that's that, sort, of, uh, that uh, sort of distance. And it's a very old historic town in England. And right in the middle of Northampton, in the town centre, <coughs> excuse me, you will find the university. If I go back to my first slide, there we are. You will find the very new campus for the University of Northampton. They built a brand new campus in the middle of the town, which opened in uh, August 2018. Before that, the campus used to be just on the outside of the town. Uh, and then so they spent half a billion dollars building a brand new one, and it's an extremely impressive place. And what's, it, what's interesting about the new campus as well is that it's all designed around blended learning. So all designed about making the most of technology and having people learning from anywhere, um, which is interesting because the time that we find ourselves in now with COVID, of course, many universities are following that model, but they were doing it well before COVID was there. So anyway, so in the University of North, uh, rather in Northampton, you find the university in the middle of the town, and one of the buildings on campus is called the Senate, which I've taken a photo of here, and on one of the floors is what's called the Doctoral Research Students uh, Space, and it takes up a whole floor, and it's somewhere where if you guys are ever on campus, that you can go and spend as much time as you want and study there and meet tutors and go to the graduate school and whatever else you might want. So there's a dedicated space there for doctoral students. Now, the university itself, I'm sure you will have a look at its website and do all of your own research, which is exactly what you should be doing. So I've just thought I'd pick out a couple of points. The first is that education in Northampton dates back an awfully long time, it dates back to about the 13th century. But the modern University of Northampton dates its origins back about 100 years, when it was a, it used to be a technical college. And there's about 14,000 students and about 1,500 staff. It's that sort of size. And I just picked out one of the uh, rankings that it has. And this is the Teaching Excellence Framework, which is a ranking done by the UK government. And so it was an official ranking, not like any other ranking you might see by a newspaper or anything else. This is by the UK government itself, which ranks teaching at universities, either gold, silver or bronze. And Northampton has created a gold, which is the top standard. So that's a tiny bit about the university. As I say, do have a look at the website, and find out all about it yourselves. But what I particularly want to talk about tonight, of course, is the DBA, the doctorate. And this is the program I look after locally. Um, so I shall be able to tell you, or when I say locally, by the way, there's, of course, there's a, a doctorate of business administration intake that occurs on campus. And then there's our intake, which has been happening now for just over four years. And that's the one that you, uh, used to be taught in the United Arab Emirates, or the workshops were in the United Arab Emirates, and then the professors would fly in. But now, of course, because of COVID, 
those workshops are being done virtually through the university's virtual classroom. And I'll mention more about that later. But just when I say locally, I'm, I'm uh, giving this webinar tonight from Dubai. That's what I mean. I mean that the off-campus variant that we do with the workshops in the UAE. So first things first, with the doctorate, the, the, um, what I first, let me just rearrange my screen. One of the major, one of the, the, the first questions I usually get with when I talk about the doctorate of business administration is, well, what is a doctorate? So I thought I'd just spend a little, just a couple of minutes on that. Now, doctorate degrees have been around for hundreds of years, since medieval times, and they've changed quite a bit over the years, and they change depending where in the world you are. And, uh, and, for, and for example, in the USA is a bit different than the UK, etc. But in its modern terms, a doctorate, we consider a terminal degree. What we mean by that is it's the highest degree that you can obtain. Now, there are some very small exceptions to that rule. There are some postdoctoral certificates and things, but essentially it is the highest degree that can be attained. Normally, it's a bachelor's, a master's, and then a doctorate degree. So you're at the very highest level. And within doctorates themselves, there are two types. One type of doctorate is called a research doctorate. And the most common type of research doctorate that you, I'm sure you would have heard of is a doctorate of philosophy, a PhD. And research doctorates are exactly that. Somebody undertakes this research to find out something new, some new knowledge. It could just be a new theory. A PhD can be done in any type of uh, discipline and any type of subject. And these types of people are people you'd normally find within academia or research institutes. Now, the other type of doctorate that we do, that's done, which is at exactly the same level, is called a professional doctorate. And these doctorates are for people who are not primarily engaged with research in their professional lives. They're engaged within an industry, within an organization. So, for example, the one you probably come across the mo uh, the most more often is a medical doctor. A medical doctor does an MD. That's a doctorate for people in medicine. Uh, there's a doctorate for engineers in, in NGD, doctorate of engineering. There's doctorates for people in the pharmaceutical industry. There's doctorate of education for people who want to get to the highest levels of education uh, and within that, or within that industry. And of course, the professional doctorate for business people are DBAs. Those people are primarily engaged within industry, within organizations of business and management. That is the doctorate of business administration. So you see that the two different types of doctorates, one primarily engaged with research, the other you're primarily engaged within industry. So these two doctorates, the PhD and the DBAs, they're academically equivalent. They're on the same level. The only difference is the DBA is more applied, it's more practical, if you like, whereas a PhD could be purely theoretical. And there are quite a few similarities between the two. They're actually both research-based degrees. If you do a PhD or a DBA, you will do one big research project. But as I say, the difference would be with a DBA, it'll have a more practical outcome. And of course, and both confer upon the bearer the title of doctor. Once you complete a doctorate degree, that is the title that you use. Just to make just one more slide on that, because I think it's an important distinction just to, uh, to make clear. This slide's a bit wordy, so I'll, I will read through it. And it's just from allbusinessschools.com, but I quite like it. I think it makes the distinction clear. So let me start at the top. PhD programs in business focus intensively on preparing candidates to conduct, excuse me, highly specialized scholarly research. They focus on the development of new theory in management, economics, and related fields. Most PhD and business administration graduates lead to careers as university researchers and professors or as senior researchers in business or government. 
The next one, DBAs. Doctorate of Business Administration, DBA programs focus on the application of theory rather than on the development of new theory. The Doctorate of Business Administration, by virtue of its focus on the application of theory or the practical elements, has a more practical application in managerial settings in the PhD. So as I say, it's a bit wordy, but I quite like how it makes that distinction and how it just tells you how a PhD and DBA differ. But of course, it's not a cut and dry rule. There are plenty of people who have PhDs who work in industry, and there are plenty of people with DBAs who work in universities. But this is the basic distinction between the two. All right, let's move on from that. So what sort of topics do DBA students do? What sorts of things, practical things, do they research? So here I've just picked on some topics that our current students are doing. And it's just a random selection. They really do all sorts of different things in all of the different fields. So it could be anything in human resource management uh, to organizational behavior, finance, accounting, uh, business ethics. Uh, it could be uh, project management or operation, supply chain, anything business and management. So some of the topics our guys are looking at a critical examination of a performance management system. Uh, I've got another look at leadership styles and employee performance, uh, one in the public sector, an assessment of corporate governance in the public se sector, uh, assessing the value chain in a manufacturing business, reasons for investing in high-tech startups, resolving project conflicts, agile project management, uh, and then one looking, one of my students actually looked at the knowledge transfer and management training sessions. So you can see from that list how it can really be anything in the business and management field. And I'm actually seeing quite a few proposals coming through at the moment that are looking at things like social responsibility, uh, risk, sustainability, environmentalism and business and these types of topics as well. So anything like anything business and management can be done. The program itself then, it's what we call a two plus two, which means it's got two years taught and then two years, which is the thesis or which was when you actually do your research project. So the first two years, you study six different modules and these tell you, tell you everything you need to know about how to research, how to do it. Now, as I put on the slide here, these workshops used to take place in the United Arab Emirates over three days, a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. So for example, the first module would be principles of research. It would be a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday. And then you would, the tutor would, uh, the professor would fly in from the University of Northampton, take you face to face for those three days. And then, and then you would um, deal with your tutor and do your assignments at a distance for about the next three months. You would then hand in those assignments and then you would move on to your next module, Advanced Quantitative Data Analysis. So you do these workshops three days, work distance with your tutors, and then make your way for the three years. And then once you got to the second two years is when you work with your supervisors. You actually work with three of them, a Director of Studies from the University of Northampton, and a first and a second supervisor, and they direct you through independent research when you actually do your big project. But as I put on this slide, because of the situation we're in at the moment, all of these workshops are now being taught virtually. So you, you, we use a virtual classroom. Where your professors are the same professors who would have flown here to take you for these modules, but at the moment, they're having to do it virtually um, because there's simply no other way we can do it. So you're going to be taught in exactly the same way, the same things by the same people, but you're going to be using uh, the virtual learning environment that the university uses. So bear that in mind. The other thing to bear in mind is the next start date. It's very soon, the 12th to the 14th of November. And I know the consultants at Stafford who you would have been working with to get you here at this webinar tonight, We've given you all the information and are finalizing applications for that intake. We have two intakes a year. So the one after November will be May of next year. So every about May and November we have intakes. 
So that's the program. Assessment. So all of these, the first two years, all of these modules have different types of assessment, and they could be an essay, a seminar, presentation, a debate, a portfolio, reflective report, and all sorts of different things. Okay. But your, your professors at each module will tell you exactly what they expect from you. There are no exams, they're all some form of an assignment. And that second two years, when you do that big piece of research yourself, the thesis, that's when you come up with a 40,000 word document, and that's assessed by a viva voce examination. That means an oral examination. And that's the only time where you do need to go to the University of Northampton and you'll uh, <coughs> for that examination be accessed. Okay, lots and lots of support for this uh, for this program as well. There's the international DBA program leader. That's a lady called Hala, who's uh, at the university's campus in the UK. And when you submit your application documents and you go through the interview for admissions, that's when you'll meet Hala, so right from the start. I look after this program locally. I live here in Dubai. Then every one of your tutors has a professor. And then, as I mentioned, at the thesis stage, there's a director of studies, two supervisors. There's lots of administration from the university itself or from Stafford locally if you can't find what you're looking for. And it has the program, every module of the program has its own virtual learning environment, what we call Nile, or the Northampton Integrated Learning Environment. And it wouldn't hurt if I just showed you a quick screenshot of what it looks like, actually. If I can manage to do that. Okay, you should be able to see that now. So this is what Nile looks like. This is just the main page, and on the left there's all sorts of things I'm not going to look at. But if I just pick one of the DBA module, this is quantitative analysis. And I go into it. You should be able to see that's okay. This is a, this is my view of it. So you'll see some things that are for staff and not for students. But anyway, you get the idea. Down the side, this is where every module we're all of the communication happens, the announcements and the contacts, all the module activities. And if you look there, there's the button for the virtual classroom. So on those three days, that's where you're gonna click and you're gonna see your tutor and all your classmates, where all your reading and resources are. This is where you assess and submit your work, and things like that. So this is what I mean by that Nile site. Every module has one of these sites where everything you need is. You're reading your resources, you're linked to the, um, the electronic library and everything. So I just want to quickly show you that and get back to my slides. So that's what a Nile site looks like. So there's that for every module and there's an extensive online library that will has everything that you need. Just trying to get myself back, but I seem to have disappeared. Don't worry, I will get there. Doesn't matter, that should be okay. All right, so that's the lots and lots of support for the program. Let's get on to the entry requirements then. So to get onto the program, so to get onto the program, you need to hold a master's degree in a business related subject completed within the last 10 years. But if it is longer than that, as long as you can show that you've been keeping your knowledge up to date by doing training courses at work or something like that, it should be okay. We also look for a minimum of five years work experience, at least some of which should be at a senior level. 
and that you're employed in a leadership management role capable of supporting the program learning outcomes. Remember, the DBA is all about for people who are working in industry, who are working as managers and leaders within industry. So that's your entry requirements that we look for. When you actually apply for the pro, uh, apply for the program, the first things are fairly standard: a CV, a personal statement that's going to talk about uh, your why you want to do the program, how it's going to help your career, uh, what your position in an organisation is in, is now, and those types of things. Then references and degree transcripts, evidence of English language ability if it's not your first language, if it's asked for. And then the last two things I want to mention just a little bit more. You also need to give a research proposal, which is only about a thousand words. It's only fairly short at this stage, but this is where you're going to give the, the, give the team that's going to interview you, the admissions team at the university, an idea of what you're wanting to study, what you're wanting to research in your DBA. Just on that research proposal, you know, why is it required at this stage? Really, at three, there are really three reasons that the admissions team will be looking for. Is the applicant capable of studying at doctoral level? So it should be a certain quality of proposal. Does the proposed research fit with the nature of a DBA? So as I've mentioned already, does it have a practical outcome? And then does the university have an appropriate supervisor? Now, I've just put here that the university can supervise pretty much any major area. But if you had a very technical uh, project that you were thinking of doing, a very little known quality system or something like that, then it's possible there wouldn't be a supervisor. So at the early proposal stage, just make sure that you're looking at a, that it, it falls within one of the, the general areas of business and management, strategy, finance, HRM, et cetera. And just the last word on proposals, this is what they're looking for. Can it make a practical contribution? Can the applicant reference using Harvard? Can they write a brief literature review and some basic understandings of research methods? And of course, the good news is all business and management master's graduates should already have these skills. So if you've already done a master's degree, then these skills should come easily to you. And I meant to mention the interview as well. So once you submit your application documents, submit your proposal, then you'll be, as long as you meet the criteria, you'll be selected for an interview. And during that interview, you'll meet the program leader, Hala, and then you'll also have somebody on the panel who's an expert in the field. So if you're doing something in strategy, for example, it'll be a strategy person. And then that, in, uh, that interview will just ask you more about your job and why, again, more about your personal statement, why you wanted to do a DBA, but will focus mainly on the proposal and what you're thinking about doing. All right, I think that pretty much covers uh, the main things. One thing I haven't mentioned that, of course, always very important, the program fees. And for this, please have a look at the Stafford Global website for the current fees, because these can change between intakes. And I want to make sure you've got the very latest fees. So please have a look at the website or check with your consultant from Stafford and make sure you've got all the information you need about fees. But once you do see the fees, you'll see it's a very reasonable price for a DBA program. Remember, it's not an online program. You're directly taught from the faculty themselves. It's a part-time program. Just a couple of final words. Why should you do a DBA at Northampton? Because it's an investment in your future, both in academic and professional fields. You're going to be completing the highest qualification in business and management. You're going to contribute to business and management practice. It is expected that your final thesis would be published. You've got international and local supervision and then local workshops from the faculty. That, as I mentioned, are being taught virtually at the moment. Last word from me. Completion of the Northampton MDBA will set you apart as an expert able to lead and manage at the highest levels. You have made a unique contribution to your field and developed outstanding analytical, critical, creative and reflective skills 
so needed in today's business world. Essentially, a DBA will get you to the very highest levels of, uh, of industry, if that's where you want to stay. It will give you the choice of moving into academia. It will give you the choice of consultancy, setting up your own business. It opens a lot of doors. Perfect. Now it's time for those questions. How did I do for time? Oh, it took a bit longer than I um, expected there, actually. Never mind. I think I got most of the key things. I think I managed to keep talking about most of the key things. Now it's time to open up and have a look at the questions. And I've got lots of questions here. Let me just have a look. Okie dokie. And just before I do those, I'm going to find my webcam because I lost it somewhere. I will find myself at some stage. Hmm, okay. Never mind. I can't see myself, but you can see me. That's the main thing. Let's have a look at these questions. So my first question is, after the talk modules are complete, can I do the rest of the program on campus in the UK? You can go to the campus in the UK whenever you like. As I showed you in the presentation, there's a dedicated a uh, place for you to stay, to put you into research and to work. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, the only thing is the second part of the program, of course, there are no taught modules. It's all just supervision. So you can do that from anywhere you like. Your supervisors will be contacting, you'll be talking with your supervisors using all the usual electronic means. But if you want to go to the, the campus, you can at any stage. And also there's what's called the graduate school on campus that runs all sorts of different uh, workshops and things that you're more than welcome to attend as well. So essentially you can go to the campus anytime you like. Um, yeah, okay, Catherine is saying, will I be able to meet my supervisor here in the UAE? Now I'm not sure how many of you listening to, listening to me tonight are even in the UAE, probably not. I think you're probably, all coming th from throughout the Middle East and Africa, uh, primarily. But that's depending wherever you are. Would you meet your supervisor? Um, of course, you it's not possible at the moment. You know, it, no, no, nothing face to face is at the moment. But assuming once the COVID is all settles down and everything gets better, um, it's 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 possible. But generally, you're going to meet your supervisors electronically, depending where they are on the world. There's not really any major benefit to seeing your supervisor face to face, I don't think. You know, meeting them via Skype or one of the, these technologies that we use is absolutely fine. But if the opportunity arose, of course, you would be welcome. And of course, if you wanted to go to the UK and meet your supervisors, that's absolutely fine as well. But I don't think there's any particular benefit in doing so. I stopped my DBA studies at another university. Can I get exemptions on the modules completed? And not for this DBA program. For this one, you really need to begin from the beginning because it all builds on, uh, it all builds on, each module sort of builds on itself. So you need to start the journey from the, from the beginning. That's the best way to do it. And then we've got a question about the interview. So as I mentioned, the interview will be with the international DBA program leader, Hala and a specialist in your subject area, whatever the proposal is on. It takes a maximum of 30 minutes. And if you're preparing for it, just be prepared for questions about your professional practice. So what your, your job is at the moment and the industry that you're working in and that type of thing. Um, but most of it will be on the proposal. So make sure you know your proposal very well about what you're planning on doing. You know, at this stage, they're not expecting the proposal to be anywhere close to perfect but it should be at a standard that suits admission to the program and the idea should be developed enough. That's really all they're looking for at this stage. I completed my master's degree about 13 years ago, but have extensive senior managerial experience. Will I be able to apply for the program? Uh, yes, so you completed the master's degree about 13 years ago. 
We normally look for a master's degree completed within the last 10 years, but if it's a little bit longer than that, it will be okay as long as you show some evidence that you've kept your knowledge up to date. So you've been doing some management training at work or some short courses at work, something like that should be fine. What is the duration of each module? So in the first two years, there's six modules. So if you divide those basically up, you're looking at about three months per module. And then when we can get back to having face-to-face -face workshops, you would need to come here to the UAE for those three days. So it's only six times in two years. It's not too often, once about every three months. But as I say, it's all virtual at the moment. Oh, this is a good question and a tough one as well, actually. Based on experience, on average, how much time should be dedicated per week for these modules to complete the modules? You know, that's, that's a tough one to answer because different students will pick things up faster than others. And also, in my experience, some people will find some modules easier than others. So, for example, one of your modules is quantitative analysis. Now, if you have a background in that already, you'll find that fairly easy. If you don't have a background in that, you're going to have to spend more time. But, but to give you a bit of a, a, a guess, if you like, or an average, I think if you can set aside eight hours a week, I think then you would be, that would be the sort of thing to think about. And some students might do that a few nights a week. Some people might just do it on one day per week and focus on their studies. But that's probably about what we'd look at. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we are. Let me take my next question. Is the DBA program accredited? Oh, absolutely. Yes, the universities in the UK are accredited by something called the Quality Assurance Agency. And you cannot call yourself a university in the UK until you are accredited to by the QAA, QAA and have something called the Royal Charter. So that's the UK government seal of quality for the British universities. And if you have a search on Google for QAA and um, the, look at the government's own website, it has a list of recognized universities. You can go on there and you'll find the University of Northampton. And then you talk about the private accreditations such as AACSB, et cetera. University of Northampton hasn't looked at private accreditations yet. What I mean by private is they're not governmental, they're just done by private profit-making uh, organizations. Um, and there are some benefits to it for, for universities, and there are also some downsides to it as well. For example, if you're already accredited by the UK government and um, an inspect, inspection is mandatory by the QAA, why do you need an extra private accreditation? You know, so there's questions around these. Uh, as I say, there's pros and cons to them, which I won't get into at the moment, but the U University of Northampton, I don't believe, is looking at the private accreditations yet. Okay, here's Marcus. Question. Can you share the names, contact details of alumni or graduates who are willing to share their experiences on the program? Because of data protection, we couldn't share the names of, the, of, of them directly with you, but what we can do is have a chat with your academic consultant at Stafford, and then that person could identify somebody for you and contact them on your behalf and ask for permission. So it is possible, so talk to your academic consultant about that, to see if they can talk, organize somebody who's uh, on the program to give you a bit more information about it. Um, Andre, oh, he's got a question for me. The university's DBA ranking. There aren't really any DBA rankings. It's the only one I'm aware of is the, is the newspaper one, the Financial Times' is DBA ranking. Of course, that's a self-selecting uh, ranking, which means the university itself has to put itself into the ranking to actually be on it. Um, and again, again, the triple crown accreditation is that private accreditation you're talking about. And again, it suits some universities where it doesn't suit others. The key thing about accreditation, is it accredited by the UK government, which of course it is. Now, 
Oh, this is important, Andrew, because you said mention the campus in the UAE, UAE. There's not a campus here in the United Arab Emirates. What we do is the uh, the tutors, uh, the professors from the University of Northampton, from the home campus, they will fly in for those three days and they teach you at a hotel in their conference facilities and then they fly back to the university's own campus. So there's not an actual campus here in the UAE. It's what we call a fly-in faculty model. And it's very common for British universities. I used to do it quite a bit flying when I was uh, back in the UK working for, uh, working for universities over there. We used to particularly go to Hong Kong, Singapore, we used to go to parts of Africa. You fly in, you teach, and then you fly back again. That's the sort of model that we do. Amar's got the last question for me. Oh, this is a good question. Can I modify my research topic during the first two years of the program? Absolutely, you can, and you probably will. So as I mentioned before, when you do your initial proposal, it only needs to be a broad idea of what you want to study. When you do your two years taught, you're going to learn so much more about research that at the end of that, you're going to have a far more specific and detailed proposal, and you will find your initial ideas have changed somewhat. So that's absolutely fine. You're not stuck to that first idea that you had. Perfect. I think I've managed all the questions and some good questions there too. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, so if of course you have any other questions, let me bring up my uh, email address. Oh, I'm having no luck at all with my presentation today. There we go. Yeah, you should be able to see that on your screen now. If other questions do come to you, uh, just feel free to give me an email anyway. Um, there's my email address and my phone. Also, when you submit your proposal to your consultant at Stafford, they will, all, they will always send me your proposal. And I will have a look and give you some comments before it's submitted anyway. Or if you want to just email it directly to me, maybe you've just got an idea about what you want to do and you want to check it with me, absolutely feel free. Just email me directly on there and that's fine. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you're all staying safe and well wherever you're listening to this. And I hope I see you on the program soon. Bye for now.